When you're first getting started in the miniatures hobby, getting a dedicated space for your hobby and set up can be a little bit daunting and quite frankly, a little bit expensive. I'm here today to show you some cheap alternatives to get you a hobby in for £50 or less. And we'll get started after this. Pickle job! Hello and welcome to The Pickle Jar. My name's Josh and today we're going to be showing you some cheap hobby alternatives to save yourself some money that you can spend on some much needed miniatures. I've put links for everything that I mentioned down below in the description or the closest things that I can find if I've bought it in store. So make sure you go and check out the links down below if you're looking at buying any of the things that I talk about today. And if you've got any alternatives of your own, make sure to leave them down below in the comments. So first of all, we need to protect whatever workspace we're using. Now, a lot of people, myself included, rush out and buy themselves a cutting mat because that's what you see a lot of other people using. Now, if you're planning on doing a lot of cutting for things like kit bashing and conversion, then yeah, I'd recommend getting a cutting mat because it'll save you a lot of hassle in the long run. If you're like me, however, and it's mainly painting that you're gonna be doing, then I'd just recommend getting a roll of work paper. This cost me three pounds from the works, which is a shop in the UK, and I mainly got this for when I started airbrushing as it provides a nice easy backdrop to stop the paint from going everywhere. All you need to do is cut yourself off a piece to match the size of the area that you're working in and blue tack it down to stop it from sliding around. It can be rolled up and reused if you've not made too much mess or if you have made quite a lot of mess like me then frame it and sell it off as modern art. Now that you've got your space protected, it'd be helpful for you to be able to see what you're doing. Now this leads me to my second recommendation and the most expensive one on this list. Lighting is something that can get very pricey very quickly and I've spent a lot of time looking online at different options for different things for my own hobby space. So when I stumbled across this light advertised at £14, I was understandably a little bit dubious. I ordered it on a whim, but I've been thoroughly impressed with it and it is absolutely fine for hobbying. It is not as powerful as a lot of the other options that people talk about more often, but it's also about a fifth of the cost. Now, after trying this out and being impressed, I did go back to Amazon to check the price and it has since been put up to 18 pounds, which is still an absolute bargain, especially if you're just getting started in the hobby and need a way to light up your hobby space. Now you're finally ready to get some models put together in your new space. Now a lot of people, especially when they're brand new to the hobby, use the glue that Games Workshop sells. I did this for years and years and struggled with clogging up of the little metal pipe and things like that. That is until I was shown this stuff, which is Tamiya Extra Thin. Now this stuff is now the only glue that I use for plastics. It comes with a brush in the cap, which I found makes application way easier than the little tube and it's very very cheap four pound a bottle on the site that i've linked down below now i've been using this bottle for about a year and i've barely made a dint in it because you don't need a lot of it at all something else you can do with this once you've used up about half a bottle or decanted it into another bottle is to create what we call sprue glue now this is basically when you put off cut bits of sprue into the bottle and let the remaining glue melt it down. And what this does is it creates a nice gooey substance which you can use to fill in small gaps when you're doing kit bashing or building and things like that. If you're building metal miniatures, then any super glue will do. Though I usually use these little tubes of Gorilla Glue. Again, nice and cheap, and they give a good secure bond either alone or in conjunction with parts being pinned when you're building something a little bit bigger. We're about ready to prime our models now, which is where my next recommendation comes in. Now, rattle cans can provide a nice, quick way to prime your models in a variety of different colours. For a while, I've been using the black and grey primers from Halfords, but recently I was sent these over from Colourforge. Now, they're slightly more expensive than the Halfords ones, but only by a couple of quid, but I thought I'd give them a go and see what they're like, and I've been very impressed with the results that I've got. I understand that a lot of people prefer to use something that is aimed at miniatures rather than just generic sprays, so if that's more your thing, then maybe consider giving these a go. There's a link down below in the description that gets you the black, the grey and the white, and then a matte varnish for free, so if that's something that interests you, then check that out. Now if you've watched much hobby content on YouTube, you will undoubtedly have seen people talking about using wet palettes. Now these are designed to keep your paint wet for longer, allowing you to use it over a longer session or even multiple sessions without the paint drying up, meaning that there's less waste. 
All you need to do is order yourself a takeaway. Chinese is my preference. And once you've finished enjoying eating that, you've got a nice empty takeaway box. Cut up a sponge to put in the bottom to fit. Get yourself some water and saturate the sponge, but don't flood it. And then cut yourself out a piece of greaseproof baking paper to put on top. Once that's finished, sort of soaking up the water a little bit and the edges have finished curling, you're good to go. You've got yourself a nice cheap wet palette. Now you can put some soap in this and store it in the fridge, which helps to avoid getting bacteria and stuff in there. I tend to run out of space long before that, so I don't bother, but that's up to you. Finally, we come to actually painting our models. Now, when you're just starting out in the hobby, brushes can be a daunting product to buy. You'll have plenty of people shouting bizarre names at you, each telling you why those ones are the best. The truth is, you don't need fancy brushes when you're first starting out. It's far more important that you practice brush control and get used to actually using a brush. So I'd recommend just getting some cheap synthetics to start with. Now I've picked up this set, again from the works, for £3 for the four. They all have nice decent tips on them which should last long enough for you to get the hang of using a brush. Once you feel confident enough and want to upgrade, that's the point where you should start looking at nicer tools. There's a link to our channel sponsor Broken Toad down below who make the nicest brushes that I've used in a long, long time. So I recommend checking those out once you're ready to upgrade. If you can make all this extra stuff cost a little bit less, then it means you've got more money for miniatures and paints and things like that that you can't really avoid buying. There's plenty of advice on this sort of thing out there and I know that some of you will have different options on products to the ones that I've listed and there's no right or wrong answer. It is all down to personal preference and these are just my recommendations, but I'd be glad to hear any alternatives. So if you've got any, be sure to leave them down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below. And if you want to see more from me, then maybe consider coming and checking out one of my live streams that I do every Wednesday at 8 p.m. I've put links in the description for all the products that I've discussed today. And if you want to help support the channel, then there are also links for our affiliates and channel sponsors down there as well. If not, then you can always do what these amazing people have done and join our membership program right here on YouTube. However you choose to support us, it's all massively appreciated. So thank you very much. That's all from me and I'll see you next week with another video.